two things stand out with eat famous because i mean you know you look at the if you look at the page on like a surface kind of level quickly kind of flip through you're going to notice primarily like the burgers with like four patties or the crazy the slice of pizza that's as long as me but mixed within that there's a lot of um uh just a lot of things that like are from all over the place whether it's you know comfort food to fine dining i eat foods from all across the world i've had things that people say i'm crazy for having i've had don't cut me off the show or anything i've had like beetle stew i've had horse hearts i've wow. had frog legs um Whoa. like i so i i say this to say that in answer to your question i was the pickiest kid growing up so wow. the fact that i'm doing something to like to do with food and like tons of food um you know, is is wild to me. Like no one who knew me as a kid would ever think that like I would be doing what I'm doing now. Also, too, um, not related to to food, but just like my younger self growing up, super shy, didn't like to be the center of attention, didn't like to talk, wasn't really into like putting my opinions out there. So to to be me on too. social, eating all kinds of stuff, and to be telling people like I think this, you should go here. This is the best. Um, very wild for me. So that's another thing that people need to take away. That like, you know, change and develop. You're never going to be one way forever. You're never ever going to be one way. You're listening to the Grind and Gratitude Show. I am Danny Stone, and I've dedicated my entire life to helping people win, win in their careers, win in their businesses, and win in their lives. This podcast is going to help you get on your grind and hustle to create the life that you love, and walk in gratitude along the journey. Each episode, I'll teach you tools and tactics and bring you conversations with experts that will help you turn your passion into a thriving online business. Life isn't about wishing for something greater. It's about making it happen. There's something special about you. Grind until you find it. Be grateful when you get it. Welcome to the Grind and Gratitude Show. If this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much. If you're an avid listener, then you already know I got a lot of love for you. My name is Danny Stone, also known as Coach Stone is in the building. I'm the host of the Grind and Gratitude Show. And every single week you get a brand new episode to help you level up your life, your business, your relationships, your finances, your mindset, your habits. That's what this show is all about. And we want to say thank you to the listeners in over 55 countries for tuning in. Like, we, we just really appreciate it. We really appreciate the love and the messages that we get. And i um, really excited to keep this going. And thank you for helping us to reach more than 100 episodes. So super excited for that. And we're committed to keep going. But as you know, every time, every time I bring you guys a guest, you guys hit me up and you say, wow, like the guest was really amazing and you want to dive in and find out more. Well, I only bring you people that I believe in. I only bring you guests that I think are going to help you to see something different or do something different. And my guest today is a very special guest. He's a great friend of mine. We've been friends for a long time and I'm super happy that he's here. Let me tell you a little bit about him. He's a self-made entrepreneur. Ryan is the face and the soul behind the ever popular Instagram account at Eat Famous. Now, if you haven't seen Eat Famous, you got to check this account out. Arguably one of the most sought after food culturalists in the country. Ryan has used his platform to elevate both brand and cause with his unique style and technique. Um, with an organic following. So we have to say organic following of over. I checked today. 264,000 followers on Instagram. You guys heard me right. 264,000 followers. And check this out. His hashtag has been used over 4 million times. I mean, that's amazing. We, we got to definitely dive into all these secrets. Ryan continues to amass a fleet of top tier clientele seeking his expertise, including McDonald's, Air Miles, Google, American Express, the Toronto Raptors, the Bay, Domino's, Hershey's Canada, A&W, the LCBO, and others. So welcome to the Grind and Gratitude Show, my boy, Ryan Hinkson. How you doing, brother? I'm great, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. It's so funny, you know, because we've known each other for so long to, like, hear you talk about me in that context when it's, you know, it's just family. It's, it was funny to me. I'm just like, oh, man, like, hopefully I didn't give Danny too much on that, <laughs> on that intro or bio. 
Nah, there could have been, I'm sure there's a lot more. So I, I appreciate you for scaling back. Most of the time, people send me pages and pages and I'm like, I can't read this. <laughs> oh, man, man, I'm so happy you're here. How are you, man? I, you know what? I'm, I'm doing I'm doing beautifully. Um, and this is something we might get into a little later because I know, you know, in the past, we've had some deep conversations off of camera and even in front of camera. But um Something I, I would love someone like yours perspective on is like, you know, the last couple of years for, for a lot of people have been a very trying time. And um, I used to have a little bit of like trepidation and anxiety about expressing how great I'm doing or feeling because, you know, you don't want to come off like a jerk. You don't want to feel like you are out of touch with, you know, what's happening. Um, but I, I think I, I find a way to kind of just try to put the blessings and what I'm grateful for first, you know, grind and gratitude uh, ahead of things. And that's not to say I'm, you know, unaware or, um, you know, not thinking about other people's problems, even if, if I'm in a season where I might not feel like I have any, but um, yeah, no, I, I'm doing great. No, I know sometimes that might feel a little inappropriate to say off the top, you know, in these times when so many people seem to be kind of stressed about a bunch of different things, but I can't lie, I'm doing fantastic man. I disagree. I mean, I think you, you speak your truth. Like if you're doing well, you're doing well. If you're not, you're yeah. not. It's really up to you. And I don't think you should feel guilty for all of the hard work that you put in. Like the reason that you're doing great is because you put in the work and it's not just the, in your business, in your family, in your personal life. So yeah, man, I don't see it as bragging whatsoever. I see it as Ryan's been putting in this work and that's what we're going to talk about because sometimes when people see the 264,000 followers and the 4 million ha people using your hashtag, they don't know the road that it took to yeah. get here. And so yeah. it's okay to just bask in like, you know what? I'm, I, I am doing great because I yeah. always wasn't doing great. So that's I have, true. I have no issues with that at all. <laughs> that's the truth. That's, the truth. Great that's perspective. a great way to start, bro. But, um, you know, you and I, we met, I think it's more than 10 years, I think. Oh, it's got to be. Easy, yeah, easy. Way more than 10 years ago. Yeah. And I, I remember we met through some mutual friends and I remember meeting you at like a house party or something, yep. like a nice little get together. Yeah. And this guy comes in, you come in and I'm like, man, this brother is dressed like your style. You got I like your style, right? Like I, it's, same. <laughs> it goes the same way. It goes the same way. So like, you know, it, I really like the style and all that kind of stuff. And and so like, how does, how does like style kind of play into yeah. this whole thing that you're doing with food? First of all, tell everybody what Eat Famous is all about. Cool, cool. So Eat Famous, um, I guess, primarily would be known as, as an Instagram account. It's a food focused account that I run, but I mean, it's, it's definitely turned itself into a brand. It's also kind of fixated itself as um, my alter ego or nickname, I, I could be in a mall or at an event and people are like, yo, eat famous. Like some people don't know that my name is Ryan. So, I mean, it's, a, yeah, it's a multitude of things, but um, for, for, uh, you know, for, for most people, it's an account on Instagram um, where people can just come and, you know, see me indulging in, in food, um, you know, expressing my opinions on food. i using content creation to just share food experiences, travel experiences. And um, the funny thing is, is I, it was definitely not something that was, that was planned. It, it came out of a business idea. Shout out to my boy, uh, Terry Diaram, who had a, an incredible business idea about 10 years ago that kind of put me on this train because um, prior to that, I did no social media at all like wow twitter i didn't even have a facebook account so maybe really? five years ago until like instagram was making it um impossible to do work with brands unless you had a facebook account um, so i was slow to the game in, in in terms of social media so to find myself at the front of an account that has allowed me to you know work for myself become an entrepreneur um is, is yeah it's pretty incredible man it's pretty incredible but, and this the style thing i think um for me and I got I got to give it out to my my pops first because he's he's a style guy. Everything that um, I that I got in terms of putting value in terms of you know he always was like you know act like you either just came from somewhere or you got to go somewhere right. And I feel like I try to have that bleed into the the photography you know and the way I, I capture food um, when I when I go out and present myself I try to put that best foot forward. 
um, not just obviously in terms of surface, you know, um, how I am with people, my interactions, um, you know, being genuine. But yeah, I, I feel like if you look good, you know, like what did Dion say? You know, if you look good, you play good. If they play good, they pay good. So Dion Sanders, my pops, <laughs> you know what I mean? All those were early, early influencers in terms of how I value style and just how kind of things look. And I think that's why I've been able to um, have an account that people are very, very fond of like the images and how things look. Because I, I can't say I'm like a, a a food critic or anybody who might have, or at least when I started, much more knowledge than the average person in terms of what was good, where to eat, and what have you. But I, I know how to make things look good, I think. That's awesome, man. I love how you incorporate the different things that you love into one thing. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't think that you can do that. You know, we're living in a world now where you can combine five or six of your different passions and make that a business. It, it wasn't yeah. the case even six, seven, 10 years ago. I couldn't say that I love music and I love motivational speaking and I love writing and combine all those things. People would tell me they have to be separate. And yeah. so I love the fact that you brought the things that you love together right. and made a business of it. And I think yeah. even still, people still have to wrap their minds around. You can do lots of things and, and put it all into one or separately mm-hmm. if you want. So, no, I, I totally agree. There's yeah. something that you did, not, not to cut you off to sure. point, but um, it's funny because it was, I, I think it's pro- it was probably just a story. It was a story that you did. I, I don't know if you were celebrating something or something was coming up, but you... um. You were playing, and I know everybody uses Insta, uh, music, the music feature in Instagram, so it's not brand new, but I took this specifically and I put it in my pocket. It, you were playing uh, We Win, it's uh, Lil Baby and uh, Kirk Franklin, and you were just vibing, and I was like, man, like how Danny used the music and like his, just your, like that, that very real moment. I was like, he's definitely feeling this. This wasn't like staged or I'm going to have to do this 10 times. You're like, you know, when you see something, you know, genuine article. And I was like, why? Like put that into what you do. Because I was like, you know, a lot of times we were chasing like a very specific aesthetic or feeling. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes we, we forget that that can be communicated on one take or in one real emotion. Like, you know, someone might think, oh, this guy's a coach who, who helps people in business and in their lives. He, he would have to be very, very serious, you know? <laughs> but like that, and, I, and it's, it's funny, like, it wasn't just like, oh, this song is dope, but like, that to me is just like the, it's like the essence of somebody who gets it, man. So, you know, just, there was a, there was a point that you made in terms of having different interests, be able to build up one thing. And I think, you know, you've obviously shown that in a lot of ways. And that was just a small example. But like, I think, you know, understanding that, like, for you to help people be the best that they can be, I think you've tapped into like, be the real Danny, be the best Danny, because how can you help someone be the best them if you're not, you know, truly you. So I I really feel what you say in terms of bringing and I was like, obviously, this man's a music lover, you know what I mean? Because it was, it felt natural. And I think that's what works in terms of driving people to success is being as natural and new as possible. I think that's another thing that you couldn't really do as many years ago. It's like really be yourself. I think today, um, you know, there's more reward in that. Yeah. We have so many more images and so many more reference points in terms of like, cause the globe is always shrinking. We have access to more people. You would think that, um, people would do more copying or mimicking, but I think, what I'm taking from it is like, I'm seeing a whole bunch of people do that, you know, and I, I love that. So, man, that's a great observation. And thank you for, for catching that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's this thing that we have in coaching. It's called dancing in the moment. Okay. Like you got to dance in the moment and basically dancing in the moment means like as a coach, you can't make up your mind to have an, uh, an outcome based on your conversation with someone. I can't come into you and say, okay, I, I want Ryan to walk away with this. I got to learn to dance and go with you. I have to go with your flow. I have to learn to dance in the moment with you. And 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 I think as a coach, it's really important to, to be able to do that. But just in life, like people don't realize, and I'm glad you caught that, 99% of my social media posts is yeah. what I'm thinking at that time. I don't right. plan it. Yeah. So my wife is very, she's the opposite. You know, she's a TV guest expert. She's a culinary yeah. nutritionist and her feet, her posts are amazing. Yeah. She plans out what she wants to do for the week or whatever. Me, I wake up and I'm like, this is what I feel like saying. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's and so that's how it comes. And then for, for you to catch that, I used to be a former DJ and I love music. Yeah, right. Okay. I love yeah. motivating people. So mm-hmm. it's come by you caught it, right? You definitely yeah. caught it. Like yeah. <laughs> So that always stuck out with me, like, you know, and it's especially when we think about today and how much messaging we see um, for me. To, I'm sure that was over a month ago. You know, yeah. for me to catch it and remember it. Um, yeah, it, it says a lot because it's tough to stick these yeah. days, even when you're good. Yeah. Well, you know that we're going to talk about your your massive social media following in a minute. But like, what were you doing before you got into this? Like, where, what's your background in terms yeah. of what you were doing? Man, so when I started, I was um, I was probably midway through a very long corporate career at uh, Coca-Cola. Um, I actually did most of the building of Eat Famous. Um, and I mean, t- at, not at the point in terms of where I was just posting or where it was an account, but I mean, in terms of, like, you know, uh, working with brands, having partnerships having a, um, a side hustle that fully functioned as a nine to five. Um, and then, you know, you kind of get into that space where you're like, do I leave and like bet on myself and do my own thing? Um, and that, that came eventually, but it, that it's still that part, that phase is pretty new. So yeah, I was at, um, I was at Coca-Cola, um, you know, West Indian parents. So like to them, it was like, okay, yeah, you know, he went to school, you know, um, what did you study in school? I did study? marketing in school. Okay. Yeah, I did marketing. Um, and then got a job at a company. So, like, you know, to other people, the boxes were checked, but to me, <laughs> they were empty because I mean, Ooh. again, I'll reference gratitude, not just because I'm on this this pie, but definitely I, I can't um, you know, knock what that job did for me in terms of being able to um, you know, like not just pay the bills, but like certain relationships, like directly the person that taught me about social media I met at that job. You know what I'm saying? Um, some of my best friends who I consider family, I met at that job. Skills that I met in terms of dealing with, you know, certain clientele or different functions of a business help me, you know, with what I'm doing today. So I, I don't want to completely like dump on it, but yeah. I'm, yeah, I, I was just doing the nine to five thing, you know, and this, this kind of popped up and um, it felt right. I've always been a person that I've, as long as I've been kind of working um, a regular gig. I've always been doing something else, creative, hoping that it would kind of pop. Uh, I did music for a lot of years, and then I, you know, I had to kind of figure that wasn't happening. Gave that up, and then um, also while working corporate, I had kind of joined uh, these guys who were who had set up a really and this might this might strike a chord with you because I know you ball as well. Um, it was a men's basketball league, and I was doing marketing for them. We were trying to look at like the landscape of like organized ball in the city and see if like we could elevate it a bit, like do something where there was like a really dope, like all-star game with like voting and like, you know, just, wow. and it, it just, it, we, we put a couple good years in and it didn't hit, but I was happy doing that. So I've always been someone that's like, I could go on the straight and narrow for, you know, whatever amount of time, but I always need that something creative to keep the juices going. And, um, you know, there was a situation, I think COVID, um, and reassessing, you know, the importance of really kind of grasping moments because we don't know when things are going to switch was a huge influence in terms of me just saying, hey, you know what, I got to do this like full time, just just me and, and bet on myself. And yeah. So like w- it, it happened during COVID. Like when did you just because a lot of people are probably listening like, you know, they're doing the same thing. I used to work yeah. in the corporate world and I had yeah. side hustles the whole time. Yeah. And so, you know, how did you know? Mm-hmm. when it was time for you to make that transition? Cause there's people right now in that current situation. Yeah, what did yeah. you do and how did you know the time was right for you to make, to leave your job? So for me, um, I probably had a little bit of a cheat code. So as you know, I had a baby um, just about oh, coming up on two and a half years ago. So wow. she was born just before COVID. She was born on Boxing Day 2019. Wow. Right? So Amazing. Um, yeah. So, you know, she comes into the world, life is beautiful. And um when she turned six months, I decided to take a uh, six month pat leave just to, to be able to spend some time with her. Right. And at that time, um, COVID had hit in March. So then I, I think I started like uh, my pat leave. So I was working from home in March, like full time from when COVID started up until say June or July. I took a mat leave. And then, then I had six months of just being with her. And then, you know, with the early stages of COVID, everybody's in the house. So I spent 
so much time with this girl. And it was like, again, you know, it was like the blinders from all the madness. And it was just like, I was like, my days are beautiful. Like they're absolutely beautiful. The work from home time, just being around her, even though it was working as tough, was amazing. But then the pat leave, I'm like, yo, I'm just with her. But then of course, at that time, I'm, I have, you know, you kind of balance things because a, a baby's very demanding, but it's still giving me a sprinkle of more time to do Be Famous stuff. And I'm like, yo, you know, things that were a little scary, like the numbers adding up and meeting responsibilities month to month, it was becoming very clear. Um, even though it should have been in terms of just the fact of what it lit in me all those years ago, that should have been clarity enough. But, you know, sometimes it isn't. But when the, like, the numbers were adding up and like there was no other kind of distraction, I was feeling I was th- I was in a mindset where I kind of started sprinkling it out there as I was getting close to having to go back to work. Just, you know, conversations with people like saying, hey, man, if you can think of anything for me, because I, I was think I was still in the frame of mind of like, it's probably a good idea to have a job. I just knew I, I needed a change from the yeah. kind of work I was doing. Because even though I went to school for marketing, I wasn't doing marketing. And I feel like if I was doing marketing at a nine to five, that probably would have like quenched those creative fires. But um, I wasn't. So I was kind of having just more conversations, putting it out there, trying to manifest a change. And a, an opportunity came up. Um, it was with a startup. I, so I was like, you know what? I left Coke um, after almost... 17 years it was like Whoa. years and like a day before 17 yeah um and then i left for this other situation which again it didn't work and it, it just didn't work out but it was quick so it was like two months um but did you regret I, that did you regret no, that? oh no because i wouldn't i don't know if i would have left coke to just do eat famous and it, it's it, you know like I'm a big believer in cliches because I'm like, if someone's saying something for a long time, it, it, there has to be some truth in it. And that whole 20, you know, t- like vision, hi- hindsight is 2020. That really came into effect. Like it was like, right, you could have left a long time. So you know, you could have, but yeah. you're gone now. Um, so when that other situation didn't work, I came home, had a conversation with my wife and she was just like, why don't you just do your own thing? Like, and I was like, Yeah. I, I think I'm going to, you know, and, and that was it. And just haven't looked back since. Bro, that is a crazy journey because other people would say, because you had a baby, you should have just yeah. toughed out. You should have toughed out the Coca-Cola thing and just for another yeah. 10 years and retired. But right. like it, 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 it's, it's a whole different type of mindset. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, I talk about this to people all the time. It's like, you have to have the discipline to follow your curiosity. Yeah. Right? And give yourself permission to fail at the same time, because when you do those two things, you actually give yourself permission to succeed. Right. There's so many of us who know we should be doing something that we're passionate about for years. Like it took me a long time to leave my corporate job and I kept dipping my toes in and out. And one of the things that I liked that you said was you actually sat down. You looked at the numbers. You looked at how much money do I need to make and Mm -hmm. what are my bills? And now I have a daughter. And. I think that's so important because a lot of people talk themselves out of doing what they love for a living or becoming an entrepreneur because they just think it's impossible when they really haven't even sat down to like, right. how much money do I need? Yeah. Um, yeah. To make a plan. Like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll save up a, a year's worth of, sa- of bills before I actually right. leave. There's so many things we can yeah. do if mm-hmm. you sit down and just look at it like you did. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true. And I mean, there, there's a, you know, a multitude of reasons of why people don't. I mean, you know, a lot of times I think it's probably fear um, or, you know, sometimes it's just there's, there feels like there's so much going on. And yeah, I remember I was thinking like, man, are people going to think I'm nuts? Like, but then again, like no disrespect, but who cares? Yeah. Because like, if you know me, you know, I'm not going to do anything to like endanger my family, put us at risk or, um, you know, put myself first not that there's anything wrong with putting yourself first i mean in, in like a negative way where i wasn't considering anything and i'm just like blindly chasing something because no i wanted to get rid of that quote-unquote security because that's not as secure i've seen how many people i saw the people way more qualified to be at coping get chopped or when they even presented uh, their superiors with the idea that they might leave there was no effort made to keep them right so what and I, I mean, I excel when I'm engaged and I'm part of like something's direction. 
Mm. I can be very honest. I'm not a good worker. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm a great guy. Like I'm that guy that like, yo, Ryan knows where we should go for lunch. Ryan's kind of <laughs> Ryan complimented my shoes. Genuinely, not 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 like on some fake stuff, but yeah. like I I I know like I think I did well in my corporate jobs because like I'm great to be a, around. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, like, yeah. In terms of like being a great worker, buying in, trying to like lift something that's not mine up. That's not really me. Um, so I was like, how far is like, you know, being the, the dude that everybody got, loves really going to get you in terms of like success or having something where you can like show this to your daughter and say like, look what I did. I know my best chance at showing her that she could do anything is to try to do anything myself. Right. So yeah, to me, that's, it was the best time. It wasn't the worst time. That's great. I, I really love that too. And it's like, you're right. It's like, what message are you sending to your daughter or your family or whatever, or the world when you tell people they can be anything they want to be yet you, you, you're anxious and and frustrated and, and, you know, don't want to go to this nine to nine job every day and your, your family and your friends can see it, but yo, but you can be what you want to be, but I have to, I have to slug it out for another 10 years. Like what, what type of message are we telling ourselves? And what type of message are you putting out to whatever you believe in God, the universe, Right. It's like, I want more, but yeah, I'll just settle for this. Right. So I love the fact that, you know, you set a bigger goal for yourself. You you, you follow the curiosity and you just decide, you know what? I want to yeah. build my own thing. I want to yeah, build yeah. my own thing. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. It, and it, it, it's tough. And I mean, you know, you, when, when we're enjoying like the fruits of our rewards, we can't forget about the days that we had no fruit because that's what makes the fruit taste sweet. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, man, like I remember, and um this was like, and there's a couple people I know who because you know a lot of times in life, like we look to like say like you or people will look to celebrities or people that are like massive or people like that they can't really access or touch um as like the only people who have done like big things or things that we wouldn't know how to do. I remember when you wrote your first book and you had you had invited us to the lunch. Um and I was like, yo, how does somebody write a book? Like, and I'm not a dumb person. You know what I mean? But because, like, no one around me had done that before. You know, it's funny because like, you're the first person that I know, like, say, like, I know this person for real that did something huge, like write a book. Now, I, you know, I've met, like, being in the food space, I know a couple of chefs with cookbooks and things like that. Um, but, like, to, and it's still, like, an incredible um, achievement. But I remember when you had done it, I was like, and he's and he's a brother and like you know we have like this um this this we we're not you know how the world will see us is not generally lost on us right so it's like oh my gosh somebody got behind this brother to like tell people what to do like we we can tell people what right. to do right you know what i mean like your messaging was on point like yeah you have the keys now drive like but it's still kind of like it was at least at the time to me it was weird i was like wow like like you like you're like a real book you know? <laughs> yeah. so that was something where like i see those kind of things and all these kind of things um just like one of my boys actually my same boy i referenced at the, at the top of the pod terry um he, you know he owns several like buildings and i re- i was like you're buying a building but i never i'm never the kind of person to be like oh like hate or not like i might not understand it or i might be like wow but then i'm like oh, okay yo Danny can write a book. Terry can buy a building. Like these aren't things that I saw my dad do, my uncles do, you know, my parents' friends do. Right. You know, I mean, most of them came here from somewhere else and had other priorities and other things they had to build upon. But like people like yourself, you know, when we did the brother, the summit for excellence with Sean, like when when you can reference people that you know doing things that before aren't within the realm of your possibility, it's so huge so you know when we talk about the fact that a lot of people you know they don't you reference that uh like people won't even try to make a plan i think it's because we don't think we can Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like Mm -hmm. um we we don't think we can i I gave um a a talk at a graduation ceremony for the um the future black leaders of tomorrow and so what they do is basically provide mentorship for kids who have business ideas help them develop their business plans and such and like the biggest thing that they were saying is like 
um, you know, you don't have to try to like wow these kids. Just let them know that like you actually did what you're showing them because a lot of us just don't think we can do it. You know what I mean? Like it just, th these things seem so foreign, whether it's like communally, socially to us that it's like, if we don't have a reference for it, like how could we do it? So what you're doing here, you know, giving myself a platform, giving um, all the other people that you speak to a platform, you know, sharing your stories, that's part of the, the bigger work, right? Because just the, the possibility that we could do it. Like if there's no birds, the Wright brothers probably aren't thinking about flying. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not building planes. If, if you like that, that's inconceivable enough seeing a, but you're at least you, like you said, allow yourself to be curious. How's that bird out there flapping its wings? Right. right? Um, so, you know, I, you know, I try not to get too down on, on, um, on people who may not like see the vision, you know what I'm saying? Or, or believe in stuff right away. Because again, like I said, me and you are, you know, we're, we're friends, but I also consider us peers. Yeah. And at a time I was baffled by what you were able to do. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, yeah. You, 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 make, you make excellent points, man. I think one of the, the things that I talk to people about is like, you know, who is your life support network? I talk about it in the book. Like, who are the people that you spend the most time with? Because mm -hmm. if you have five friends that are naturally curious and, and doing things, you're going to be the sixth person. If, you, if you're around five people that are constantly negative or who have limited beliefs or or they set the bar low in terms of their goals, you're going to be the sixth one. So a lot of it is really you, I call it a reality check, having a reality check about your life and the people that you're spending time with and really saying like, are they supportive? Are they encouraging? And are they doing, are they exploring? And for a lot of us, it's not right. You go to a job, everybody complains about not wanting to be there yet. You're still there for 40 years. You know, you talk to your friends, Oh, you know, I'd love to travel to this place. And they're like, why don't we just go to the normal places we always go to, you know? So all of these things, it's difficult for you to kind of flap your wings because every time you get curious and you want to put yourself out there, you have people telling you all the reasons it's not going to work. Yeah. And so Les Brown said it best. Other people's opinion of you is none of your business. Yeah. yeah. If they're not I mean, for you. So many gems, but that's one of the top ones. It's yeah. not, if they're not for you, then, then don't worry about it. And I think, Ryan, one of the things that we have to realize is because we were those people too, that when people at some point in our lives, when people decided to step outside of the mold of working your corporate job and living this life that society tells you to live, we were skeptical at some point in time. We were like, well, that person's yeah. crazy. So yeah. I think what we have to understand is that everybody's on a different phase in their journey. Mm -hmm. But you don't need permission to be curious. You don't need permission to do to just say, you know what? I want to know more about that. You don't need yeah. permission and you shouldn't expect other people to believe in your goals and your dreams yeah. when they can't even believe in their own. Yeah. Yeah. This right. And you take it per less less personally, too, because, you know, if like, you know, sometimes you have some news, you share it and like you, you know, say like the homies aren't as excited as you think they would be. And it, you know, sometimes you're like, are they hating? Are they jealous? Or it's, if it's not as, but like some people have so many things going on or some people may not just be able to comprehend like these things. Right. So it's not that they don't care that they don't want to support necessarily, but it's, again, it's kind of like, you know, when you're on an airplane and they tell you when they're doing all the, the safety precautions and everything, and they're telling you like, if you're with a kid, and something happens, you put your mask on before you put theirs on, right? So, like, right. until we can kind of breathe and focus and do what's right for us, it's it doesn't make sense to try to do it for someone, right? So, right. yeah, focus is a big, big thing, right? Like, people's opinions, all those things. Um, I mean, you know, you have a trusted circle or people that you you really believe that are have your best interests at heart. And yeah, you use them, of course, like, go to them, bounce ideas, get your reality checks, ask them, you know, if you're tripping. Um, that's fine, but to be constantly kind of concerned or worried about what people think at the end of the day, like, and I mean, even those closest who might have like nothing but love for you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember the, the biggest thing I was worried about in terms of when I was deciding to leave the job was telling my folks, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Because yeah. Like, they, you know, you jump on a video call with them. They're like, are the baby socks long enough? She looks cold. So I'm, I'm going to tell them that, like, oh, I'm not working for anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were really supportive because, and it was, it was beautiful because like, you know, they've seen, I guess they've seen the work, you know, over 
over the last few years, you know what I'm saying? And I've, um, you know, done things, I guess, that, you know, they can reference, they can like send a clip of, you know, me being on like TV to their friends or put it on their Facebook or whatever. So even that, <clears throat> me kind of thinking I was going to hit this wall of, of rejection from them, that didn't even happen. They're like, okay, well, once you're good, you know, and, and we believe that you can do it. This is, this is great. So a lot of times we're throwing all these roadblocks and fears that like we're creating a response or a reality for someone that might not even be the case. Absolutely. Like, sure, we know people and yeah, we're, you know, but like, uh, you know, we don't want to always be so concerned with what we think is going to happen. Things are going to happen. And, um, you know, aside from a f- couple things, the worst thing is if something could, you know, take you at your life and put you in the ground. And then to be honest, at that point, what are you going to do about it anyway? Right? right. Most things are not as scary as they seem, you know? Good point. And, and you know, one thing is great that your parents were so, so um, supportive. And, you know, one of the things I talk about, Ryan, all the time is that um, I say this all the time. One of the biggest lies we've ever been told in our lives is that you just got to believe in yourself. Like that's Mm -hmm. that's the the biggest lie ever. Nobody gets started when they fully Oprah, Elon Musk. Nobody ever gets started when they believe. Right. It's I I always say progress equals belief. The more progress, progress you make in your life, any area of your life, your business, your relationship, the more progress you make, the more you start to be like, wait a minute, I can actually make this thing better. Wait a minute. And you start raising the bar. Yeah. So in yourself, you start to believe it. But here's what's interesting. When you said this about your parents, here's what's interesting. Other people start to believe it. Yeah. All of those people, like no one thought I was going to write a book. Mm -hmm. You know, I told, I I, I made a mistake and told a few people and I'm like, yeah. I'm writing a book. They're like, yeah, that's great. We've heard that before. Yeah. And then and then I pop up and I'm like, um, yeah, what do you think about this name? And they're like, man, get out of here. Then I yeah. showed, I sent the book cover and they're like, why would he do okay. a book cover? Okay. Then I started a Facebook page. Then I started a website. Yeah. Then I said, the book is out. You're coming to the book launch. Yeah. So at, at, at every phase, I started mm-hmm. believing I could do it. And at every right. phase, all those people that were like laughing at me were like, yeah. Why is he doing a book cover? And all of a sudden, so progress <laughs> equals belief. And I think that's okay. what you've seen in yourself, I'm sure. And that's what your parents and other people have seen, even your yeah. wife. Like, yeah. I'm sure she's seen that. She she believed in you just like my wife did. But yeah. once she started seeing me on stages and speaking and right. oh, Danny's amazing, she's like, damn, this dude <laughs> can speak. Like, yeah, yeah. But it's progress equals right. belief. Right. right. So that kind of came up when you were talking about your parents. Right. So. Yeah. No, it's true. It's true. And I remember, like, I mean, again, you know, we're all grown, but there's certain people that it's just like, yo, I'm grown to a point. You know, but yeah, I, I, their um, yeah, their response was was amazing. And again, it's a testament to, uh, I guess, you know, what, what they've seen. Right. And I think that's another thing that we, you know, sometimes don't talk about, too, is like accountability, because it, it's great to have goals and dreams and stuff. But I think, you know, what gets lost with some people is they expect, you know, the applause or the understanding or the support out the gate without maybe giving people anything, any reason to believe that they're going to do this. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, so at a point, it's like you said, or you just kind of focus in on what you have to do. And you maybe you save the announcements for, for later, or like you just do it like, yeah, okay, there's a book cover. Why would he have a book cover? Right. And, and, and like at that point, it should have been like, oh, shoot, he's really doing it. Right. You know? Right. Hey. So, so, so like what was your childhood like? Were you always in into food and around food? Like what was like uh, in terms of food and like your yeah. just childhood? What was that like? So this is this is funny. So, I mean, you know, um, loved food always, always, okay. always. But like me off the show or anything i've had like beetle stew i've had horse hearts i've had frog legs um like i so i i say this to say that in answer to your question i was the pickiest kid growing up so the fact that i'm doing something to like to do with food and like tons of food um you know is is wild to me like no one who knew me as a kid would ever think that like i would be doing what i'm doing now also to um, not related to to food, but just like my younger self growing up, super shy, 
didn't like to be the center of attention, didn't like to talk, wasn't really into like putting my opinions out there. So to, to be Me on too. social, eating all kinds of stuff and to be telling people like, I think this, you should go here. This is the best. Um, very wild for me. So that's another thing that people need to take away is that like, you know, change and develop, you're never going to be one way forever. You're never, ever going to be one way. Um, but yeah, like I, I come from a family who all love food. You know, I have, I have one sister, um, grew up with both my, my parents in the home who, um, were great, great cooks. So, and then What's my mom, background? oh, uh, my folks are both from Barbados. Okay. Barbados. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my mom's one of 10, 11, um, like eight or nine of which were all here in the city, seven of which at least two kids or more. So like 20 something first cousins, um, <laughs> everybody's in the same city. So the family gatherings are crazy. <laughs> um, food is the center of everything, you know? So, I mean, there was always a love for it, but uh, between me being picky and then also um, my sister could cook, my dad could cook, my mom could cook, and I kind of just coasted. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm just enjoying this. And then I remember <laughs> when I was moving out for the first time, I was like, yo, what are we going to do? And I think I spent like two months, a month in the kitchen with like moms mostly, um, and even my dad, and just like made them like show me their like my, all my favorite things. Yeah. But um, yeah, again, like, you know, like although I've always had a passion for food. Um, for it to be part of like my job is wild. And then a, a very interesting thing, if you'll allow me to kind of get into this. Sure. Um, if you're a side hustler, business owner, or entrepreneur, you know that running a business or a side hustle can be really challenging. There's so many things to learn in your business. There's so many things to learn about yourself, your mindset, your habits. So how do you do all this alone? Well, if you really want to have the level of success and the freedom and the income and the impact that you want, maybe you can't do it alone. That's why we decided that we wanted to help. We dropped a brand new Champion You Academy. The Champion You Academy is going to be coaches, teachers, and mentors who are experts in their field that are going to teach you what they know. You're going to have digital products, memberships, courses, programs, and coaching that's going to help you to take your life and your business to the next level. To find out more, go to championyou.academy. That's championyou.academy. I said I love food um, to a point of almost damage. So I want to say it's probably been a long time now. Um, over 10, probably before we had met actually around that time. Um, just prior to that, I lost about 65 pounds. So I had spent a lot of years wow. drastically overweight. Like wow. Overweight. Um, yeah. I remember part of the things that sparked the change was um, a doctor telling me I was like this close to being pre-diabetic, wow. uh, pre-obesity. And I was a what young, age? 20s in my early wow. 20s. Wow. Like, okay. Yeah. And it, and it had been for a while. Uh, God, I always say, God bless like '90s hip hop style, like being able to wear 44, you know, <laughs> size 44 pants and triple X hoodies and stuff saved me because a lot of people were like, "Yo, you weren't that big, you weren't big." I was, trust me. Um, so I had lost just before starting to eat famous and stuff. I lost, yeah, like 65 pounds. Wow! And so, how did you lose you know, the weight? Um, two, two main, well, three things. I uh, just eating better, intermittent fasting, and um, I was like okay, this is going to be hard. If I can figure out the thing I, I hate doing the most, I know I can drop it. So I started running because running was yeah, like, I'm with you. I could not yeah. do. And I, I remember before I couldn't jog to like the hook of a song. And I remember it was a big celebration. Like when I made, I'm trying to remember the song. It was because I used to listen to the same song all the time. I was like, if I can get from just the hook, the beginning of the hook to the end, I could do this. And then I remember being able to, to like jog for two hours. Straight. Wow. That's amazing, uh, man. Yeah. Okay. So food, I've had a, a complicated, interesting relationship with food. And then as Eat Famous starts to gain popularity, I'm going to restaurants four or five nights a week. Um, I'm eating everything for free. And then again, although I try to cover a full scope of culinary stuff, I know where I hit home runs is like, when I give you that that food porn and those overly indulgent the things and those things that you could gain weight by by just looking at, 
So right. in the back of my head now, I'm like, right, we can't go back to, to what you do. You got to find a way to figure out how to still continue to do this, right? Um, because it's working for you and you love it, but you have to still be able to control like your weight, your health, because we there's no going back, right? So yeah. trying to manage to find the balance in between like being someone that's a presence and having, you know, like Trudy can tell you, um, like having enough content all the time in where, and like, I mean, it would be a blessing to be doing what she's doing because more content she has just the better for her, you know, how yeah. fitness, wellness. But for me, I, I'm kind of, you know, tippy-toeing on a side of um, things that can be dangerous. And then, you know, also my conscience now, because I know what, um, not paying attention to what you're eating mm. and, um, you know, having a, a high caloric intake and not managing properly did to me. So I, <laughs> man, it, it's wild because I do you, again, you might look at the page and be like, Oh wow. He's pumping out all these things that aren't good for you. But I try to inject, um, you know, like through, through the captions or whatever that, you know, like people know, like this is a, a snapshot of like a very well managed, highly curated life. It's not like I'm throw yeah. these things in the garbage after. No, I, I don't yeah. believe in food waste or anything yeah. like that. But, um, you know, I, I walk a very fine line because I'm not trying to push anybody to, um, you know, what I was struggling with before. Right. I mean, there's accountability in that though, right? Because there's someone that can look at my page and not let it influence the way they eat. I mean, I, I create this page and I'm still able to somewhat, you know, have a healthier kind of life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's so many kind of components wow. that go into things that I think, again, you know, when we think about, um, you know, people who are successful and I'm not just referencing myself is that like, you know, people will always ask us because we get the most questions when we're doing well, right? right. We don't really get the questions yeah. on the come up. Right. People, oh, how'd you do it? How'd you do it? And it's like, however we choose to answer them, I don't know if there's anything that can really be said to explain like how much real work it takes because there's so many things that could have taken me away from food. I could have just been like, I don't want to, to, to be overweight again. I'm stopping, right. you know, but I was like, no, I got to figure out a way to do, to do both. Right. Like, you know, you speak in front of people. I'm sure the assumption is that like, yeah, you, you know, you can, um, that you can do it with your eyes closed, but I'm sure even myself, I speak to people a lot now, but like before every speech, um, I still get that little hinge yeah. of like, you yeah. know, those butterflies and everything in my stomach, even though I've, I've done it, um, you know, like you're in, even in dream jobs and in your calling, there's going to be points that like are going to pull at you. I, 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 I don't, you know, I don't know of anyone who's doing something that other people covet that, you know, it doesn't come with a whole lot of like, maneuvering around a ton of pitfalls right so it's like you know people see reward 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 the life they're like well you eat at restaurants you do this you do that and i'm not saying that i have the toughest job in the world i love my job but like you know understand that there's a lot <laughs> right it's still work it's still work and yeah. you know two things first thing is like i like the fact that you you know you've had this challenge with food mm -hmm. and yet you still decided to go forward and and do this business where you're out here, like you said, eating all of these like, you know, hearty foods. And and, yeah. and, and and what that shows is that like you can't rule yourself out for your dream. Like right. you can't get in your own way. You found yeah. a way to get around that and mm -hmm. still maintain your health and your wellness. Yeah. And the other yeah. thing about what you do is that it's a snapshot. We can all yeah. indulge every once in a while. Like right. you're not telling people to go out here and eat this every day. You're like, okay once a month or once every couple yeah. of weeks, like if you, there's a real bit restaurant you want to go to and really yeah. indulge and do it. So yeah, choose one. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, and I love, I love the feed and I love, I love the commentary that you bring to this as well. It's like, there's an excitement about the food. There's an excitement about trying something different. And I think whether people choose to relate it to food or whatever, relate it to anything in your life, just get yeah. excited about true trying something, doing something different. I've never traveled to this place. There's right. a place in my city that I've never gone to. I've never went for a hike. Like yeah. just get curious and get excited about, you know what? The same way, way Ryan and Eat Famous bring us these indulgent things and really visually appealing. And they're always trying something. 
maybe everybody who goes to your account should look at their own life and look at something they're curious and passionate about and just be curious and say, you know what? Once a week or twice a week or once a month, I'm going to go and explore this. Yeah, right? So right. That's a big no, take. Me. I love that. I think that that makes so much sense. And it's that it's it's not just, um, you know, it's kind of like you remember when like hip hop. Well, I mean, we were like when hip hop was like really kind of grabbing like the world by its neck. And, you know, it was always like, oh, well you know, they're sampling, so they're stealing music, or this is not real music. And it was, it was kind of like, you know, or I don't like how that sounds. And it was kind of, you know, you would have people that were like trained in music and you would think that like, you could understand that you don't even have to like do or love something to like still appreciate what's, you know, beautiful about it. Like what, what it can represent outside of what you think it is, because then you have, you know, on the other spectrum, you'll have people who may not, you know, identify or listen to like a certain genre of music every day, but they can appreciate the process because they love music. And I right. think a lot, um, a lot less people would be so like angry about things in life because I get a lot of hate. Like people are like, oh, you're the reason really? why people have heart disease. Wow. You know, you're going to have a heart attack. You better, you're going to die eating like really. And I think it's because, yeah, they don't know how to see like joy you know what i'm saying like how you're saying like okay even if you see my page you might not go eat what i'm eating but you're like take from it like oh this guy's enjoying something let me enjoy whatever it is okay yeah. when i'm busy enjoying whatever it is i enjoy i don't have time to worry about what you're doing right. that rubs me the wrong way you know yeah and i think part of it too you know ryan is like when you said when when people see you enjoying what you do yeah. If they wake up every day and they're not enjoying what they do, it's easier for somebody to hate than it is yeah. for them to actually look in the mirror and say, I need to change and make change. Yeah. And that's why people, you know, I realized this many years ago, and this is why people can't always be happy for you because it's difficult. You're holding up a mirror to them saying, mm-hmm. look, you know, there's changes you need to make in your life and you're not doing it simply by just waking up being excited about doing something different. So sometimes we think it's hate. It's just the inability for them to be able to, or they're not at the place where they can make that change that they know they need to make. So they go online and they'll become keyboard yeah. warriors and talk <laughs> yeah. about you when they know yeah. if you're overweight, it's not a picture that's responsible for it. No. It's you. <laughs> yeah. Instagram didn't exist a picture. when I was when right. I was pushing to 240, you know what I mean? 230, like there was no IG. What, what am I going to do? Or, right. Like beat up the Ronald McDonald. Like <laughs> that's, it's, you know what I'm saying? Like we're all kind of navigating this same space. And, you know, there's people who have real circumstance impacting their lives and impacting their ability. And I'm not saying that that caps anybody at being able to do things, but, you know, we're talking about financial constraints, um, you know, cultural things. Like there's people that have real feet heavy feet on their neck and they still push up and they still rise right, right. and this is not to, to to belittle anyone who's having a tough time with change. No. it's like no. we have to have perspective you know what i'm saying and yeah i think you know um i i was i was telling i was talking to these kids the other day and i was saying like you know for me um you know your emotions they don't dictate your action right mm-hmm. so like say i go to a restaurant and it's just terrible Right. Say this is just bad service, whatever. I could I could choose to like be mad. I could cuss the person out. I could slander them on my account. Um, or I could choose to say, yo, maybe they're just having like a bad day. Or I could also choose to say, you know what? There's someone who's never been to a restaurant. There's someone who's only worked in a restaurant. There's some like yeah. again, and this is not perspective or bragging, but like I get a lot of free meals. Like yeah. I have to have a built-in allowance for a couple of bad ones. Like yeah. I'm never going to be like, Oh man, you know who I am. This needs to be perfect. Right. Again, like don't disrespect me. Don't walk on me. There's differences, yeah. but I, I mean, I choose how I see it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm not being like soft or weak because I'm choosing gratitude. I think that's something that we also attribute to gratitude and maybe being a little humble is like, you're being soft or you're being weak. No, like that's power because you're dictating what you see and what you feel. I don't know if we really appreciate how powerful it is to choose how we react. Like, yeah. you know, we think we hit something, cuss somebody, tear something down. That's 
power. Maybe you're physically strong. Maybe you're physically intimidating. And yo, like out of a real life, like I'm a black person, I know there's times where maybe the only choice is to rip something down or tear it down or be mad. Like mm-hmm. I'm not, <laughs> you know, but I'm saying situationally, like people that kind of continually find themselves in, in situations where they're always angry, always lashing out, always snapping. The smallest thing gets to them. Um, you know, you've really got to kind of reclaim your power. I don't even think that they are bad people. I think we've just, for a lot of us, been tricked into not understanding how powerful it is to choose to be okay. And it goes back to you telling me at the beginning, don't feel bad for feeling great, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's all connected. No, that's great, man. That's that's so that's very powerful. There's a lot of power in being grateful because once you're grateful, you attract more of more blessings and opportunities. You can't see it when you're ungrateful because you're so focused on the <laughs> yeah. things that aren't working. Like, yeah. th- I'm sure there've been many times in my life where there was opportunities presented themselves, mm-hmm. the right people, and I'm still focusing on all the things that weren't working. And here they go walking by me, and I'm like, yeah. and then when I step back and I'm grateful every day, and I wake up, I'm yeah. so thankful for everything. It's like, right. it's like. It's like going from seeing in, you know, black and white or gray to color, you know, yeah, things just become yeah. more clear. Right. So, you know, when you're saying that everyone's hearing all these great things that you're doing, like what's one real setback that you had that in your business that really kind of was really challenging for you to kind of figure it out and move through it? Oh, man. So I think um, a big setback that I had was... Um, you know, imposter syndrome manifesting and playing really dirty tricks on me. So, mm. um, I, as I said before, I had no social media background before. Um, you know, I, I shoot everything with uh, a phone. You know, I've never even owned like a, a proper camera. Wow, you and, all those visuals with a phone? Yeah, yeah. Man, your yeah. visuals are amazing, man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you. <laughs> Um, but, you know, you get into I get into spaces where there's people with, you know, five thousand dollar cameras, five thousand dollar lenses, let alone cameras. Um, and, you know, the more you do work with with big brands and corporations and, and the bigger the scale of the pro- projects, you know, sometimes there's like an expectation that, you know, you come with all of this uh, technical ability. So that was one thing. And then a second thing was, um, you know, I. Uh, I, I, you know, we have the, we have the benefit of um, you know our 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 genetics not you know making us look old and decrepit a lot of times. You know, black don't crack. But um, I mean, I'm a, I'm a grown man in a in a very young person space, right? So a setback I had is when early on um, I saw the TikTok thing. Like early, I was like, this is gonna hit. This is not gonna get kicked down by IG, like Snapchat did. Like, this is going to, but I stayed off of it, right? right? I was like, uh, you know, that's not for me. I'm a grown man. But like, I don't <laughs> think Instead of thinking like, what, what can I do on there, right? That makes sense for me. That makes sense for my brand, my self-image, um, that can make me comfortable. I was just like, oh, those are kid things. Even though it's like, right, you see it. There's going to be money there. There's going to be new audience there. Right. Um, and I mean, I'm on there now and I was super late because I was afraid of how I look as right. a grown man, right? And I think a lot of times, um, and then where the technical thing came in is like people were, were ch- shooting different ways. So I was like, you know, very, very picture heavy. At the beginning of my account, it was just pictures, pictures of food. I wasn't even visual or like front facing. Right. And then I slowly start to implement myself and then get comfortable with some video stuff and, you know, the reels and going live. And yeah, I found that. But um, again, it felt like a new world in space. And I think I kind of just like, you know, if I hadn't had the vision to say that it was le- like legitimately going to be a force and I just missed it, I could chop it up to that. Be like, oh, right. You know what? You were wrong. Right. This was the thing you should have been on, but I knew, mm. you know, and I just let like insecurity keep me off of that. And now there's people I know who their IG, I might have, I don't know how much more, but they're like killing it over there. And I could have leveraged the fact that I had a massive following on IG there early. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? yeah. I, I can't even get my name on TikTok because someone set up Eat Famous. Right. You know what wow. I'm saying? Wow. So like, again, you know, another place where like fear and also truths, like, you know, a message to anybody watching is like, even when you have success, you can still 
doubt yourself, right? Because I Absolutely. had success on a social platform. You would expect that another social platform pops up. I'm just able to like navigate right over, but I didn't. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, finding yourself, when I, when I speak to the imposter syndrome is because I was able to do well on social media with no social expertise, with no uh, technical photography skills, like you always, if something doesn't go right, I'm always just like, well, you know what, like you're really not supposed to be here. You're more of a guest. So just be happy that, you know, you're here. Right. But it's like, no, man, like I'm, I'm running like, this stuff in the city. I'm I'm a part of of the people that are are kind of defining. Oh, you're a major you influencer. Know. You're a major influencer. A lot of people come to your content. A lot of people go to your your Instagram to be like, where is he eating? You only go to the hot spots. Like when I see it, I'm like, if Ryan ate there and he's promoting it, I need to go there. And and yeah. so that's the type of influence that you have. And you know, one of the things I, I definitely am with you with all these different social media and TikTok came. I'm like, I'm a motivational speaker and a coach. Right. Like, what am I doing on? Yeah. And then I started to do the dancing thing. And I'm like, I dance and I love music, but like, right. that, is that my brand? And then yeah. I really just started speaking like the right. same way I speak on Instagram. And, you know, right. I'm slowly building my following. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like, how did you get to like 264,000 followers organically? Because yeah. there's a lot of people buying followers. How'd you do it organically? Yeah. I know a lot of people are like, how the heck right. did this guy do this? Man, so... um you know, again, I'm not, I'm not big on, I, I'm a humble person, but I'm not big on stripping away anything I, I've done to make people feel comfortable or feel like, oh, I'm still one of the gang, even though I've got this great number. But I will, I will say, and I do believe in this is not, and, you know, um, trying to be self uh, deprecating or anything like that. But I, I definitely feel like I, I, one of the, the areas where I was lucky, because I think with any success, you still need a bit of luck. Yeah. And I think my luck was, um, or being early, like I was very early on the food thing in Toronto. Mm. Um, so at the time I was, I was, it was at that stage in Instagram where like the communities were building. So literally when I started, um, you know, everybody who was into food, we'd like meet up, we would go to like all the dinners together. And like, you know, the PR companies were, were getting put on to the fact that restaurants, because restaurants really, unless you were like a restaurant in LA, like Toronto restaurants didn't PR per se. Right. And then all of the restaurants started getting PR because social was buzzing and then they were reaching out to all the, the influencers um, at that time. So, you know, I built a network of the people who like genuinely loved it. Right. So then we all kind of became, I don't want to say like gatekeepers or, but I don't know what the term would be, but like we were just like the go-to people for food. So it's like at that beginning point, a lot of people and maybe not everybody obviously didn't get to like what I did, you know, going over a hundred thousand or whatever, mm -hmm. but you still see a lot of those people from those early days with like 10, 15, 20, because they were, if you were into food, we were the people to follow. Wow. Um, for myself, I think that, well, actually, no, I'm, I'm not, not going to say, I think I know, again, the same thing I said about, you know, being that, that guy at Coke that like everybody liked, um, being good to be around is the same thing. Like I, I wasn't, you know, people are showing up to these food meetups with cameras and I'm shoot, standing with my phone. So like, I am like endearing myself to people. I'm asking questions. I'm supporting them. So I'm building within community. So like right. to anyone who's watching, like you might not have the benefit of entering a space when it's growing. So I, although I, I do credit being at the inception, um, you still have always a chance to like, you know, build like a genuine like relationships with people. Right. I did that because Danny, I'll tell you, you see the first and I keep it, I keep them uh, for like for in slides and presentations. But if you see the, <laughs> the early Eat Famous pictures, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, so, like, I can tell if it was a cheesecake or a cheesesteak. Like it just it was crazy. Um, like, real, but I mean, I was always willing to like learn. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I asked questions, I took tips, and then a big, again, you know, I just knew like that people like things that look good. So I would just kind of like build on. It. I was like, and I I, I believe in possibilities. So I'm like, I'm seeing accounts. I'm like, these pictures look good. So I, I have to be able to get there. Right. And it's not impossible. Right. I just don't know how to do it yet. Yet is like a big thing. Yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. yet. 
if you see possibility, you can, you can get there. Um, and then what I, again, because I'm a very big relationship person is my pictures, they weren't great initially. Um, you know, it was growing slowly. So this is prior to like being kind of like in the food community and getting invited to events. This is early. Um, how I got to the stage where people started reaching out to me is I'm thinking, okay, how do I, how do I build like relationships? And like, to me, although I wasn't big on social, what I do understand is why social works is like, we like to be acknowledged. We like to be seen. We like, you know, we like love. We like comments. We like people being interested in what we're doing. So I really dug deep in once a week, I would do this thing called Eat Famous Feature Fridays where like, you know, Monday to Thursday, you're getting my doo-doo pictures, but Friday I'm picking like the best pick I can see on Instagram. I'm messaging that person saying, Hey, I would love to feature you on my account because I think what you're doing is great. Do you mind if I post your picture to my account? Great. 9.9, times out of hundred, they're saying yes, of course. Cause again, community is growing. People like to be featured. People like to be, you know, held up high. Right. So what does that do? That connect me to that person. So they're now they're following me. Someone who does dope work follows me. So someone's like, oh, they follow Ryan. Right. Has to be some here. Right. Um, they're starting conversation. And then what does that also do is other people are like, oh, Ryan are featuring people. Now people are sending me pictures saying, hey, Ryan, you want to throw this up? Right. So again, now I'm being a trusted source. And as I'm talking to these people who I'm featuring, I'm like, yo, what light do you use? Hey, do you usually like shoot do you, when do you when you go to a restaurant? Do you take the food by the by the window or do you, you know what I'm saying? Or hey, I like that pick you did right, but you could do this a little different. Now I'm building relationships Good. and I'm talking to the people who know what they're doing, mm. right? I wasn't like, oh hey, how do you do what you do? Which is fine. I answer that DM, I answer that message. I do because I try because I know I, I was able to grow on the backs of people who are generous. With um, information, I, I never hold back. I'll never try to like keep secrets to myself. But for me, um, I figure that anybody that's really good at something is busy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm not going to come to you without something. I'm yeah. not saying you have to bring something for me to help you, but most people, there's got to be, because like, if you're good at something, you're probably doing a lot of it and you're probably busy. So my gift or my gift to them, my entry point was saying, hey, I love what you're doing. I'm going to share my space with you. Wow. Um, it wasn't a great place to be at, for, at first, but it, it worked. It's a and great again, strategy. Yeah. And then the hashtag, the repetition. I would, so then I told people, hey, if you want to be featured, use this hashtag Eat Famous. So there's more There's more people that think Eat Famous is a hashtag than they know that it's an account now. Wow. Um, yeah. I think it's getting close to 5 million times it's been used. And oh. on, on TikTok, I I don't, I, I, I'm going to be gassed. Can I check? Yeah, check like, it out. I think, I, th- I think it's like three billion. What? I think. Wow. I, remember I, told you, I was late to TikTok. Oh, like, wow. Something I created exists like way beyond you. You know what I'm saying? Like that's really so this is this lot. is this is way beyond social media. This is a, a full out movement. It's a business. Yeah. You know, it's a community of people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what people have to understand uh, about what you're doing and we're going to start to wrap up in a little bit, but I think what they need to understand is that you can take something as a side hustle, as a passion, and it can grow bigger than you ever thought. And and that's what I'm seeing. It's not just a, like now it's a business. Like, so now you have brands paying you in restaurants. So like talk a little bit about the business side so that people can understand this isn't just you posting. It's a business. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it definitely is sustains me. This is how I how I eat. This is how bills get paid. This is how you know um, my daughter's future is being prepared, right? Um, yeah, it, it, it's a real thing. And a funny story before I kind of dig into the business side. Well, it's a, it's like the first I want to say three times that I got emails from brands wanting to work with me, I deleted them. I thought they were scams. Like, I might be dating or aging myself, but like this is before, I guess the term content creator was a thing, and it was right. definitely before a regular person like myself would be paid to influence people. Like right. you know what I'm saying? Like unless yeah, somebody was a celebrity, like why would a brand give you money to say that you do something? Like right. that's not happening. So the, the first few times I was like, they're emailing me to ask if like. They can put a picture of their 
spaghetti sauce on my thing. And I'm like, oh no, I'm an artist. I'm not going to like, because again, it was very early. Right. I'm going to jeopardize the, because now I'm good, right? So <laughs> now I'm like, oh, my pictures are good. I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> things but then i think by the time the third or fourth email came i hit up my boy the same one terry who had had that business idea that sparked the famous um and i was like bro like um people are hitting me maybe we've got something here on a business tip so it started with um you know very very small brands paying for me to post something on their account the first couple of clients i had were american so it wasn't even me mm. uh, taking up that photo for them people would send me content. And because I was still featuring other people's work at that time, mm -hmm. I, I was fine with it. You know, once it, once it kind of fit, fit the parameters and the image looked, you know, good enough to go on the feed, I would do that. And then I started to um, get a lot more brand work. So I had to decide to stop featuring people a couple of years ago and just all the content now is all me mm -hmm. because I had to set uh, a realistic expectation for brands um, so that if they're looking at the account, they know that, if they want something that looks like picture X, I can do that for them yeah. because I created picture X. Right. Um, right. So then it moved to um, restaurants uh, hiring me to, to do their social media or to come in and take photos for them. Um, so I've run social media accounts for a lot of the most popular restaurants, helped a lot of them grow. Wow. And then I, I do a ton of brand work. So, um, you know, a couple of the companies that you listed off, the McDonald's and Air Miles, uh, Amex reps. Um, so it can be a situation where I'm creating content for them that lives on my account. Sometimes I'm creating content for them to use on their own social, social channels. Uh, I've done consulting for restaurants. Um, it's led me to, um, you know, speaking engagements and yeah, like I, I, I have a great relationship with the city of Toronto. So I work with uh, Destination Toronto, the city's official um website and hub I'm, I'm an ambassador for them so i do a lot of uh, content on their channels on mine for the city so it's like you said um a lot of different interests of mine aside from you know taking photos of, of food kind of fuel who what i am what i do wow man but yeah Debbie, yeah that's amazing i get to travel <laughs> I, I mean like you know post since covid hit i haven't done any work but like the last trip I took actually just the month before Avery was born, I was in California doing, um, I was working with uh, Destination California, their tourism board mm. to do like a, a Michelin uh, restaurant tour. I've been to France for work. I've been to Spain. to Italy. <clears throat> That's Special amazing. trip was Barbados because my parents are from Barbados and uh, Barbados hired me to come cover um, their food and rum festival, which is dope because it was like, you know, my parents were born there, <clears throat> worked hard to come here to give me a life. And now the country that raised them is paying me to come back and highlight them. So that was a very cool full circle moment. Wow. Um, yeah, man. And again, like we, you know, you like I know, you know, like it, it's beautiful to do, you know, the things that you're good at, that you love. But it, I mean, it's still a lot of work. It's work. And yeah. Again, if I'm telling you I'm working with us, I'm a partner for the city of Toronto. I'm a partner with. Google, um, like they're not, they're, there's no leash or like, you know, little wiggle room to just be a little, they, they're, they're treating me as they would treat any business partner. Right. right? And I think there's that's an important thing for us yeah. to look at too is um, I think a big gap that like entrepreneurs allow themselves to fall into is we think because we're not walking into a building and pressing an elevator button to go to the 25th floor that we're not a business, right? right. So not only um, conducting ourselves in a professional manner, but holding other people to that mm. to that standard as well, and and being um, you know just as stringent with them as they would be with you. Like if someone misses a deadline, like they can't do that to to me because oh I'm an influencer or I'm taking right. pictures. Like no, it, this is business, right. right? So you hold yourself to a high standard. You treat yourself as a business if you are, and you make sure that those dealing with you are treating you as a business. Man. As well. Man, Ryan, like I'm just so proud of everything that you're doing. When I just seeing the whole journey and seeing your commitment and knowing the work that you put in and, and just hearing all of this, it's just like, man, I'm just so proud of your journey and 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 just for keep and for sticking with it. You know, it's not just you posting some pictures, it's work, like you're saying. And every time I, I see your posts and 
you know, every time I, I see something come through, I'm just like, man, Ryan is at it again. And and it's just to me to see the evolution of where you started and where you are. It's really amazing to me. And it just shows that like when you are focused and you're committed and you just ask questions, it's not about how you get things done. It's about who you can connect with to teach you the how. And you just you, like you, you exemplified that you were asking people questions. You didn't. It's about we call it who, not how you yeah. figured out the who, not the how. And right. the how showed you the who. I mean, the who showed you the how. So, you know, I think one one other question I want to ask you is like, what do you see next for Eat yeah. Famous? What's on the horizon? Right. Um, so I, I see a, a lot, you know, um, it, I feel like you, there's not really any kind of cap that I would ever put or a ceiling because, again, it came out of nowhere. You know what right. I mean? Like, what I do now didn't even exist when I started and I've done things that I've wanted to, like I, I, I've set goals that I've hit, but most of the things I've done, I couldn't even conceive, you know what I'm saying? So like to know that I uh, was able to do things. My laptop. Um, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to know that I, I was able to do things that I wanted to do, and it was, it was back to what you said that like the belief before it was not in, the belief came after I had hit certain marks. I'm like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. But a lot of it, you know, um, that I've done is not wasn't even on my radar. So I know what I have in the pipeline. Like there's there's a show coming. Whoa. Um, wow. Yeah. 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 That's That'll be amazing. A show yeah. would be. Oh, my yeah. goodness. <laughs> there's a show coming. Uh, we're we're. Damn. starting to shoot in june um, oh congratulations yeah. brother congratulations thanks, man. Thanks. you know and um i think just uh more more things like this like I've, I've been really fortunate to have the opportunity to transition into a lot of uh a lot of speaking to young people um and a lot of young people of color who need our message um and you, again you know you said something where you, we don't know how far like what we're doing can hit um you know you, before we jumped on uh you, you spoke about an email that you got and um you have to think about like you know that that person is a person a highly esteemed person so that's incredible that your messages are reading reach start reaching people in high places but what was big to me is you mentioned that he said that like our family enjoys it so he's saying listening to that to you sorry with his voice, like you don't know what his voice can become. Like our legacies, man, like, you know, we're, we're thinking about, you know, how we want to be seen or what we can set up and do for those who, who love us and our families, but it's so far reaching. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't know who that kid in the car listening to your words of wisdom is going to be. Mm -hmm. You don't know if that's it, if like he could choose the, you know, to, to, I don't know, like something that you said can literally you know, have someone make a choice that like saves lives, yeah. builds empires, you know, changes med like you don't know. Right. So mm -hmm. be mindful of what you put out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, because it, it'll stretch far, far beyond, um, you know, what we think, where we think it's going. Right. Yeah, that's like, so true. It, that's so true. Man, like, again, bro, I'm, I'm not joking. Like even when you wrote your book, I, I was, like I said, I was still just in the middle of my, my regular job. Um, I didn't know what I was going to be doing, but again, it was always something that inspired me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then I remember, and I saw Trudy wrote a book. And I'm like, these are people I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. um, we could do great things. And yeah. I was like, these are people that like, it's not like if I see you guys or when we met at, at the get togethers, you were looking down at me or like we're not talking so it wasn't like oh there's there's a gap between this. Was, these are people like me yeah. yeah so i didn't know what i had to do but like i'm t and again this is this is not like you know because i'm on here with you but again you know we don't always get time but when i was reflecting i was like yo i remember you know because we get taught we get asked a lot about like how we did things and i always try to remember like what were the moments? Who were the people that did stuff? That I was like, wow. So when I have like moments that make people say, wow, I could be like, nah, man, it's not an anomaly. Like, it's not like 
I'm so special right. uh, or this, this, this is weird thing. Cause I could point to you and I could point to all those people I put in my pocket that did things that impressed me. Me too. So that I can let other people know, like it's not just me. So I'm not just telling you this cause I tripped and got lucky and stumbled <laughs> in some. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, man. No, well, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. And you, you inspire me. Like what you're doing with the movement is really inspire me. And in, in, in the TV show coming and everything, man. I'm just, I'm just so happy for you because I just know that you're, you're a good person and and the love and the passion that you have for other people, like to want to see them win. And that's, yeah. you know, sometimes it's hard to come by because other people are happy for you when they're doing better than you. But when you yeah. do better than them, it's like then, yeah. then the hate gets turned on. So you've always been that person who you're always supporting me. You're liking my cut my posts and you always DM me and I do the same with you. And yeah. so I just want to say I appreciate that friendship and the support. Thank and um, it means a lot to me. And I want to wrap up with the same two questions that I ask everybody. Uh, the first question is. What does grind mean to you? Wow. So grind to me, it, what it means to me is like, it grind to me is faith because I will be willing to do something hard. I'll be willing to do something tedious. I'll be willing to do something at the expense of something I'd rather do if I have the faith that I know I'm going to be so happy I did it later, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Like that's grind to me. Like, cause I know, you know, there's different perspectives. It's like, there, like there could be a negative perspective on it. Like, Oh, but, and then also, you know, people embrace it. And I, I think, you know, it's a word that I feel like, you know, it doesn't always get its true reference reverence, you know, like people will say it, but are they really, are they really, really doing it? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm on my grind. It's it's a very commonly used expression. And there's a lot of people I know who are, and it, it pays off and it shows and it lights light that lets me, you know, kind of move down my path in faith because I'm like, yeah, man, like they're they're grinding and I they're shining light, and I can see that it's that it's worth it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, that's for me. It means faith. Like it means that because like again, like I said, I'm not a great worker. I'm kind of a like even like a lazy guy. Like sometimes <laughs> I'm like, how'd you get? I have to get where you're going. Like you're super lazy. Um, but like if I know that it's gonna pay off, right? Then yeah, I will grind away. Yeah. Uh, I love that. That's a that's a really I've never heard that answer. That, so that's a really powerful answer. And uh my last question that I ask everybody is what does gratitude mean to you? Oh man, that is everything. Like beyond I don't I don't know if like there's something that I, I try to remember and express more, you know, um, like I, I said before, I said, it, you know, and sometimes I think people will position it as something that's like weak, you know, or that, you know, you're, you're kind of just softening up or, you know, you don't want to like face confrontation, but no, to me, like, it's so important because like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to just be like naive about life. And again, but I, like, it goes back to what I said about having power. And I think you can only truly have that power when you're, when you're grateful because great gratitude, like lends to so many other um, really, really good attributes. Like, like without gratitude, you don't get perspective, right? Without gratitude. um, Like, I don't know if you can really feel joy because like, it's it's vapid if you're if you're not grateful for something and you're happy you got it then you're happy you got it for like the wrong reason you know what i mean like if someone gets a lottery win and like you know like it's like a million like someone who's born rich winning the lottery or you know that you hear about those people that win the lottery twice like hey sure good for you i'm not hating but like would you ever could it be possible to be as grateful as that person that's struggling that like didn't know where the next meal is coming from you know what i mean so like yeah. gratitude ties to like i think like pure joy all of the things that are are great um you know patience all these all these attributes about people they're usually grateful people because again gratitude just means like you're able to focus on the good you know what mm-hmm. i mean yeah. more and you don't let the distractions you don't let your ego you don't let like things that are probably not going to last 
from your joy. And I think if you're grateful for your joy, what I get, like you reference, like whether it's God, the universe, whoever you believe in, if you know that it comes from somewhere or a divine force, um, and as much as like, you know, we do things for ourselves. We do things for ourselves because of the gifts that we got or the people around us or our, our experiences. So it's never just singular, right. right? So that gratitude means that like, you're really having your eyes open to like where you got anything that's good, from, you yeah. know? And um, man, you, you hear, you hear of people all the time who could, I would give them all right to be mad. I would give them all right to have a bad attitude. There's so many people I know who are good people, Danny, that I'm like, I look at their circumstance and I'm like, mm. man, even me, who's like super happy, go lucky. I don't know if I can carry smiles with what I know you're going through. And if there's, if they aren't providing me an excuse to, 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 to be grateful and to, you know, choose to choose what's, what's right, choose love, you know, choose faith. Then like, I, I'd be crazy, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man, that's so good, man. Ryan, brother, th- man, uh, this was a really good conversation, man. I think a lot of people are going to have a lot of takeaways. I think a lot of people are going to replay it back because they're going to see themselves. They're going to see themselves working in a job and trying to find their way through or turning yeah. a passion into uh, to a business. So, you know, I just want to say thanks so much for being here. And and I really appreciate you taking the time. Let everybody know again um, where they can find you online and where they can check you out. Man, so you can get me online at Eat Famous, so E A T F A M O U S on Instagram. Um, because, like I said, I doubted myself <laughs> on TikTok. You can find me at Eat Famous Official. I just got on there, just trying to trying to grow that. And um, yeah, man, hopefully you see me on a on a screen near you sooner than later. You know, we'll be looking out for that, man, brother. Thank you again so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Everybody, make sure that you go over to Eat Famous, follow him, comment, love the pictures because uh, it's really uh, food porn. You know, you'll love you'll love what you see. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate you being here. That's it for this episode of the Grind and Gratitude Show, everyone. I will catch you in the next episode. Take care. Thanks so much for being my co-host on this episode of the Grind and Gratitude Show. I really appreciate you. I hope that you learned something and you're motivated to take action and get on your grind. Didn't that go by fast? If you want more, head over to grindandgratitude.com for show notes and more information about this episode. If you enjoyed this episode, please go to iTunes and subscribe and leave a rating so more people will tune in. And let me say this, there's something special about you. Grind until you find it. Be grateful when you get it.